Piece of shit. Right, shall I do the other edge storage video or the turbo video? It's a bank holiday weekend, I best crack on with this turbo. You might have seen it in the past, I have a bit of a smoking issue with the van itself. It is chucking out blue smoke. Well, it's like, like a whitey, tinty, bluish smoke. Now, I think it's burning oil. Now, I think, well, I'm 95% sure it's the turbo itself. I have put some oil thickener agent in the oil itself and some of that rubber seal rejuvenating liquid into the oil as well and it hasn't improved. So I think, or oh, this is the reason why I'm thinking it's the turbo because there's oil leaking from the exhaust as well. So. I've bought a brand new Iveco Turbo, I'm going to fit that. Right, just want to double check it's not a head gasket. Nope, it's all clear in there, no milky residue. Is this going to explode? Oh, is that any pressure there? Right, pretty confident it's definitely not the head gasket. So I've just removed the pressure pipe from the turbo itself, that goes to the intercooler and there's definitely signs of oil there. And here we go. One turbo. I'm just open. I can see quite a bit of oil from the exhaust manifold itself. Stuff it is in the bloody head. Or the valve stem seals. I suppose I won't know until I get a new one on. I've taken a photograph, you can compare the two turbine blades together and that one's definitely minced up. Now you will get a bit of play in the turbine blades, some up and down play, but you shouldn't really have any end float. Now this has got a bit of play up and down, but the end float, I can move that a good mil or two. That's way too much. So on the old turbo, I need this part off because I need to transfer this part onto the new turbo. Now there's only four bolts holding this into position. Let's get them bolts out. I can clean it up, and fix it onto the new turbo. So now I've cleaned this up, put the gasket on. This will only go one way, which is that way. And bolt this into place. So on this side, a couple of bolts, 10mm headed, that looks of it. And this is the return pipe for the oil itself. So I'm gonna have to take this pipe off and transfer that onto the new turbo as well. So seeing this is new turbo, I'm just gonna prime up with a bit of engine oil, making sure there's a bit of lubrication inside the turbo. Then I can move on fit the oil retainers onto the turbo, making sure it's the right way around, and placing these 6mm bolts back into position. So let's get these bolts into position. I have put a gasket on the manifold, exhaust manifold, mounting point. So that's 
that's it put in its place on top of the manifold mounting point itself or underneath should I say and now I can start bolting everything back on so I'll put the washers back on get the finger out the bloody rubber glove there's four washers on each mounting bolt so get them started Goes down there to reconnect the oil return hose. Just tighten up the four nuts that mount the turbo onto the exhaust manifold itself. Now I am keeping these dust covers on for now in case any debris falls within that turbo itself. So that's the turbo now mounted into its position again by these four bolts on the exhaust manifold itself. The downlet exhaust pipe is now bolted on two with the turbo as well. There are two bolts either side. The oil feed pipe to the turbo itself is mounted on. Now there is two copper washers either side of that olive there and the return pipe that's tight as well. Now the next step is to fit the air filter in that hose onto the turbo itself and the pressure side hose that goes to the intercooler. We can get that back into place now. So that's the air intake pipe back on, two jewelry clips either side, one on the filter, one on the turbo itself. Just set aside the breather pipe for the engine because I want to be getting back in there and fitting my intercooler pipe on the pressure side of the turbo and on the intercooler itself. So that's a high pressure hose put back into place and just simply slots into position on top of the turbo itself and tube with the clips back onto the intercooler. There are two bolts here at the top that mounts onto a bracket on the engine itself and another one just behind the pipe there sort of like on a thin tinny bracket and uh, just one small bolt that holds it into a position down there. That didn't go too well yesterday, did it? Today being a new day, I'm full of positive thoughts. Now, originally I thought it was the turbo, removed the turbo, and you can see the condition of the turbo, it needed replacing. There was plenty of end float within the turbine blades themselves. Obviously both ends are connected up to each other via a shaft, and that's where that play is. So it could have been leaking oil from there, but obviously I've got another leaky oil situation coming from somewhere from the engine now looking at the state of that turb turbo turbine blade it's it looks like it's chewed something up so whether it's gone into the engine and damaged the piston rings or the cylinder lining I don't know I'm hoping it's gonna be a valve stem seal don't want open for that it still involves work but that's gonna be head off move the valves and uh, reseal them if they are serviceable worst case scenario new engine anyway i'm going to take off the exhaust manifold and see what's going on now i think why the engine is smoking more now since i've done the turbo is because i changed the oil prior to changing that oil, the old engine oil had some thickener agent in it, so I could determine whether it was the turbo or not. 
because obviously once you're thinking of the oil if there was a problem with the valve stem seals piston rings it should have calmed down that smirking and it didn't it only did it when it was getting hot after 10 to 20 minutes of running leading me to think it was the turbo and obviously the yen play within the turbo let's get this uh, exhaust manifold off positive thoughts now i have spoke to maybe and spunky regarding this and they both recommended me two garages with holes where they'll be able to set the engine out and replace it for a new one in the worst case scenario that's tight Oh mate! How goes it? Oh, fun and games mate. What have you found? Have a look at yourself. Oh, I don't want to get mucky. I think it's the Alstom oil seals. Right. Each one's wet, but if you look yeah. at that part in there, one's dry at the top. Mm. I'd, I would go along with you, stem seals. Yeah. Because one part's dry and one's wet, and it's still on the same cylinder. Now, if it was the the oil rings and the, and the piston rings themselves, it'd be all wet. It would, yeah. yeah everything would be passing. Yeah. Now the issue is, do I replace the valve stem seals? And up for the best, or do I just get a new engine? Price of a new engine? Yes, fair crack you will get some warranty with it. But obviously not buying a brand spanker, so it's gonna oh. be a, a refab, so what, 12 months warranty? 70,000 miles? Something like that, yeah. Or, no time scale. Granted it's our, your labor and time. There's nothing on that engine that mean you haven't done in the past. Oh. You do it at work every day, maybe not so much now, but of old, you used to do that a lot, didn't you? Yeah. We've both done it in my garden with my dad's cars in the kitchen on the table. <laughs> we have though, aren't we, in yeah, essence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could strip that ourselves, get the component parts and do it ourselves. No warranty, but you know it's not uh, little Tom the Apprentice who's gone and tightened all your uh, shell bearings up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other side though is, would you, if you was getting a recon engine, would you let them take the engine out and refit it? Or would you just get the engine here and do it? Yeah, nice. <clears throat> Depends on how much it cost. I'd rather they did it. At least it'd be on warranty warranty, though, wouldn't it? See, the other thing is, I know you're going to get warranty on it, but will they, will the warranty, uh, what to call it, uh, accept the, let's be honest, you're never going to do however many thousand miles warranty in the year, are you? No. Will they, will they honour that? The fact I think what will come first out of the year or the marriage. So what's a warranty worth to you really, in all, in all honesty in that sense? Even if you did 6,000 miles, that's a lot of miles to do in a camper, because in your, you, unless you're going to go from Europe, are you? <laughs> I won't be going anywhere in this fucker. <laughs> no, if you, let's say you put the brand new warranted engine in, Yeah. are you going to get your 12,000 miles out of it for the warranty? No, before the no, 12 months no. So what's the warranty worth to you? Well, very little saying that. that I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm yeah, bouncing. Yeah, what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bouncing it all out, man. Yeah. Me, I'm at our age, and can we be asked to piss about taking an engine out and strip it? No, bollocks. Take yeah. it in, pay someone to do it. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Because I don't do this shit now, man. I guess. But then, do you want to spend that money, or do you want to just do it yourself on component parts? Because yeah. it'll be half the price, won't it? Yeah. Or do you just dump it? Like I say, just dump what I'm saying. New engine, please, mate. And then go back in a week, two weeks, and um, drive off with it. Mm. I'd, I'd, I'd rather, if I concentrate on the van build itself, get them to put new engine in it. I mean, what was that a spot that Mevy mentioned here? Oh, it's uh, something in the inbox. Uh, engine repair centre. That's the same spot, isn't it? Is it? I think so. All oh, right. <laughs> Oh, that? Yeah. Alright. Oh, yeah, it's the same spot. Alright, oh, both uh, recommended it. Yeah. 
They're absolutely awesome. Are they? Yeah, I agree with you. I'll take it in. So, I've been trolling the internet over the past couple of days to see if anybody else has had the same type of problem that I've got. And, no. <laughs> So my next option is to release the exhaust downpipe from the turbo mounting points itself and we'll run up the engine and make sure that oil is coming from the exhaust side of the engine. Now it could be oil just builds up in the back box itself that's what's leaking and smoking but I haven't lost a lot of oil and I've had that back box off before and it was pretty much empty of oil there wasn't a lot in there it is leaking from the downpipe to the back box joining but I can't see I've lost around about five litres of engine oil in that back box because so I've just checked my engine oil and it's okay so let's release that exhaust downpipe and run it up again So as you can see, I've now released the downpipe from the turbo itself and it still looks fairly oily in there to me, so we'll run the engine up and see if this is spitting out oil. It's operating temperature and it's definitely leaking oil. You can see it from there. So I'm not going mad, it is happening when the engine's warming up, so something's expanding and letting the oil seep through it. I say it's not a gasket, because I've just released the pressure on that. Clean. It's got to be the old wiper seals. I bet they'll have a stuck, or the cylinder line is scored. I think I'm going to go in. I've now got the downpipe fixed back onto the exhaust manifold stroke turbo mounting point. I'm trying to see what's going on inside that engine. Now I've got myself a keyhole camera and I want to enter via the injector port or the heater plug port, whichever is going to be bigger that's going to house this camera. And see if I can see inside the cylinder bar itself and see if anything's scored or even telltale signs of oil is actually getting in there. I'm pretty, I'm 98% I'm sure it is. So I did try the camera down the injector port itself, wouldn't fit, too big. Removed the heater plug, tried again, camera didn't fit again, so the camera idea has gone out the window. But I did manage to stick the camera into the inlet manifold and I can certainly see some kind of foreign debris in there. Now I was going to compression test this engine to see if it could give me any more telltale signs of the piston rings themselves but having removed one heater plug and taking around about half an hour just to do that gingerly unturning it because it was tight I didn't want to snap it I thought buggery I've gone as far as I can with this engine so I've gone back to my original theory regarding the turbo after removing the hose from the intercooler to the inlet manifold, I cleaned the inside of the hose off and as you can see in the next picture there was definitely metal filings with inside that hose. After I cleaned it out, I used double D40, poured the double D40 into a cup, filtered that off and at the bottom of it was metal filings. So what I think has happened, the turbo has been warm for some time and over time it's just got worse and worse and worse. It's been rubbing against the housing of the turbo, 
smashing up bits of the turbine blades themselves. Then particles have gone into the pressure side of the intercooler, through the intercooler, into the inlet manifold, into the engine, where it's gathered around the piston rings, scoring the cylinder lining, or scoring the cylinder lining and damaging the piston rings, especially the oil wiper ring on the piston itself. And that's how the oil is coming back up through the engine itself and departing through the exhaust manifold. And over time when it gets warmed up, it's obviously expanding and it's letting oil back through from the sump of the engine under the crankcase pressure. And it's definitely only done it when it's warm and it's definitely spitting it out on the exhaust side. So it leads me to believe it's going to need an engine stripped down and reconditioning. As far as I'm going to go with it, like we had earlier on, though Spunky and Mevy mentioned the same garage, I'm going to take it there and let it do the job because I've not got the time or the patience to be doing an engine build. I'm going to carry on and just concentrate on you rest of the van build and probably the end of the year I'll take it into the garage and get them to do it. Get his uh, van spun round then. I did that over a storage video now. Thanks for watching.